Danny, the West Tigers, Tim Sheens, the coach afterwards, trying desperately to lighten the mood a little by saying, well, they at least hope they beat the bye and get the two points. What did you make of his remarks? Tim Sheens' uh, media conferences have been very interesting. Um, they're a bit of a throwback. He doesn't really like answering all the questions that uh, us media would like answered, and I guess the fans would like answered. But I think they've got bigger problems than he's letting on um, because we're seeing dramatic changes in that group after they promised us the best attacking football that anyone was going to see and they had the best juniors coming through and uh, at the moment they're all none of that's been backed up what, by what we're seeing and there are already questions being asked whether Tim Sheens is the man for the job long term or even for the next 12 months uh, and also whether his support staff should now be taking a bigger role like whether Benji should put more of a mark on on this team already that's being suggested already so, so who's suggesting that though because I mean to be fair to Benji, he was a legend. Terrific oh, player. I know. He hasn't coached a game. He hasn't coached an under-10 side. Yeah. He's going to walk in and catch yeah. a first-grade side and take over a team that hasn't won a game. Yeah, like, I, isn't that I don't too think, much to expect from him? I don't think it's take over, but whether he's going to have more of a get more things going that he wants to see in that side. I don't, I, I, I don't I, know. I think it's I don't too know. much to expect of him. Like yeah. he, 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 has, he hasn't got any experience. He's got no experience whatsoever. I mean... Gus spoke a moment ago about, about the, mm. the apprenticeship that Webster's done. Yeah. I mean, this guy hasn't done an apprenticeship. But this is what the Tigers wanted. Webster was at the Tigers too. Yeah, this, <laughs> is, what, this is what the Tigers wanted. The, Tim Sheens virtually... Oh, he, he, was a, he was appointed after a, a lunch where some journos suggested to the bosses of the club that it would be a good idea for Tim Sheens to coach the club. Now, those journos are running a million miles away from that, saying that no, we didn't suggest that. It's, it's uh, the club's decision. Well... Whosever decision it is, it's not working at the moment. Uh, and they're under pressure. I mean, I know it's only a few weeks in. I know we have to be patient. But it's, it's really ugly to watch for the Tigers fans. And um, I don't see any obvious solution for the club you know, straight away. I think that's but that's but isn't thing. this what they were... Isn't this, wasn't the Tim Sheen's appointment so that he could spend at least the first couple of years educating and giving an apprenticeship to Benji Marshall and Robbie Farris Absolutely. to prepare yeah. them to coach. Yeah. That was the idea. Yeah. Tim, Sheens is, Tim Sheens is the experienced coach. He's got the reputation. He can put up with two years where they're, you know, they're going to struggle. It's a trip down the mines. It's not a glamour trip. And the idea was that he would take all the brick bats for a couple of years whilst he got the roster in order and he got Benji and Robbie some experience in coaching mm. first grade. So after five weeks into what was going to be a three to five year plan, why would we suddenly be throwing everything out and saying we've got to get rid of Tim Sheens? Tim Sheens is there to do what he's doing at the moment. Go to press conferences, deal with the media, you know, take the brickbats for the way they're performing, wait for these young kids to come through, not expose them too early before. They've got some talented young kids in the, in the junior rep program. And, you know, it's going to take three to five years for them to get through to first grade. Then you've got to work out if you can win with them. It's, I guess it's not about getting kids to first grade. You've got to be able to win with them. I guess the problem is for for Sheens and Benji and Robbie is that the Tigers have had, what, eight years or ten years of nothing. That's not their control. Yeah. See, it, you know, and I keep saying this, there's no quick fix. Just because you've stuffed it up for the last decade mm. doesn't mean you have to turn it around in 12 months. It takes five or six years to really build the culture and build from within and get the sort of club that you want. It takes a good five or six years to build the foundations and get that done. Now, unless you start that some, at some time, you're always going to be chasing your tail. Tigers have been forever chasing their tail. Anyone else that's gone there has never started the program. So you've got to start now. So it doesn't matter that they've had a decade of no building and no foundation. You've got to start now, which means it's 15 years for those loyal supporters. But your journey starts now. This is where the journey starts. Hard one for you to answer there, Gus. I mean, you look at the dogs and the tigers were in pretty similar positions. You've seen the dogs move forward and give their fans significant hope recently, the Tigers, if anything, have gone backwards. So that, that's why I think the people are asking questions. When you look at the rebuild that's going on at the Bulldogs and you look at the rebuild that's going on at the Tigers, the players who have gone to the Tigers, their, their big signings, haven't been the, the stars that they want them to be. And a lot of their, their younger players haven't developed and there's still questions I know it's an age-old one, but Luke Brooks, we're still asking the same questions about him. Why, why didn't they let him go last year? These are, these are carryover contracts. These are, these are mm. things that... You, you, they could have got rid of Brooks. Plenty of times you'll inherit contracts that, that, uh, that aren't helping your club, but there's no other way to, to resolve that until you run the contracts out. It's as simple as that. 
I, look, I wouldn't be panicking. They're five weeks in. I really wouldn't be panicking at the moment because this is why Tim Sheens did what he did. You know, the, as I said, the coaching ranks are thin mm. to get out there and try and find someone that's going to come and solve it for you. And the head coach can't solve it. You've got to have the management of the club to get everything sorted in the club so that the coaches can just coach. And that's what Tim Sheens is trying to do. Gal, a couple of things. Ahead of a match, you look out on the pitch that you're about to play on and your club CEO has a footy in his hands and some joggers on. Is it an issue for you as a club oh, captain look, or a player? I, I suppose it is. I mean, with the, the club in the position they are, you'd think the CEO would be up there um, whining and dining sponsors <laughs> and trying to look after the, uh, the, those sort of people rather than being out on the field in, in trackies and kicking a footy. So it's probably not an ideal look for him. As a player, it's not, not my problem, not the player's problem. They probably would not have even known. But I think it's Did you have club CEO sitting in the sheds when you were in there with your team? Um, yeah, there would have been CEOs in the sheds, yeah, without doubt, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, he's, uh, I don't know what he's doing in the background there, but I've seen CEOs in the sheds, yeah, without a doubt I have. Look, the problem for Justin Pascoe is, again, the lack of success for the team. They're good, they're doing well off the field. Well, this stuff only comes out because the team's struggling. Correct. Just, Still. Justin Pascoe is a corporate. He's, he's a corporate CEO. In he's, sneakers he's, on he's the He's not field. a rugby league CEO. Right? He's, he's so not leaving one the line, Gus? Is it yeah, like... he's, he's not going to be one that, that, that fixes the program and does the academy and gets the kids through and, and can assess the coaching and can assess who's doing the right job or who should be playing. He's not that sort of bloke. He's the corporate bloke, very, very effective at what he does, at selling sponsorship and getting the bottom line right and financially looking after the club. He's probably just showing an interest. He's probably showing we're supporting the coach by being here. You know, we're four and oh. I've got to be here. I've got to show that I'm out there supporting you. You know, and that, that's not the drama or the split in the camp that all the media, <laughs> the media keep talking about or they want to exacerbate. What they're trying to do is show solidarity. It's a storm about nothing. It's a storm in a teacup. Well, you, it, you it make it up. Is a Who cares that he's out there with a football? Tell me this camp? then, Gus. If he doesn't play, <laughs> he can't hurt them. He's a player liking a social media post of a rival team scoring in a game that they're sitting and watching, is is that a media beat-up? I don't know if you do. If you go on social media, Gal, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Poor old Dane Laurie here has been yeah. lined up. He's liked it. It's a Broncos try against the Tigers Look, in the game that he is not playing Look, in. It's not, it's is not that a, an issue? I don't think it's an issue. No. It's not a smart thing to do. Let, let's be honest. It's not a smart thing to do. It's a, a, a try getting scored against his team and his teammates. So it's not a smart thing to do, but... I, I think this, this one is a bit of a storm in teacup. I wouldn't be too worried about this one.